We're one church. We said we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this till we die, we're gonna end abortion. Abortion, no matter how you measure it, is thriving in South Carolina and that is wrong and that needs to stop. I'd rather have a group of people who are committed to the gospel and the law of God and are willing to open their mouths to the world than 25,000 people satisfied with walking around streets and then going home and laying their heads on their pillows. Well, let me quickly start by saying thank you all for coming here today, uh, especially to our speakers uh, who have traveled literally from all over the country uh, to support us uh, with the efforts taking place here, both legislatively and in the local church. There's lots and lots of stuff happening right now in South Carolina with regards to child sacrifice. Obviously, we're here today to support uh, Representative Hill and our Bill 4046, which is South Carolina's very first true bill of abolition. We, uh, thank you. We also uh, celebrate, as Jonathan uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we were able to get um, a resolution passed at the South Carolina Baptist Convention uh, towards probably the middle to the end of the last year. Uh, and the resolution that was adopted mirrors our language, uh, the, mirrors the language of 4046 very closely. And so we praise God for that. We're seeing uh, babies being saved. We're seeing churches and pastors uh, coming to the fight. And so we're seeing all of these things happen, and we give God all the glory for that. But a lot of that would not be possible if it was not for a lot of the ministries that are represented by the folks here behind us. So truly, again, thank you guys and uh, gals for, for uh, supporting us. I also want to take a moment quickly to um, thank some local heroes, uh, men and women who have been so faithful to this fight, some of them literally for decades. Heroes like my dear friend Dr. Robert Jackson, Sister Ann Shell, Sister Ann Huff, those are just to name a few. I hope that this bill and this crowd serves as a testimony, along with Scripture, that all of those years of labor were not in vain. So today we honor you as well for laying the foundation that we stand on today with your blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you. You've already heard and you'll continue to hear how we as the church need to be in the ears of our legislators, urging them to co-sponsor this bill and to honor God with their God-ordained positions. And yes, we need to be doing that faithfully. But I wanted to use the little time that I have to address a separate angle to this fight. One of the first things that I remember Brother Rusty Thomas, who was actually here with us today, love you, brother. One of the first things that I remember him telling me when I first got into this fight a little over two years ago, he said, Brother Matt, there's two areas of this uh, battle that the church needs to be fighting. We need to be attacking the legislature for the long game, but we need to be attacking the murder mills for the short game. And I'll never forget these words. He said, legislation of tomorrow cannot save a baby today. As many of you know, it's been mentioned here, there's three abortion mills that we know of in the state of South Carolina. There's a private practice in Greenville, which is where you see, uh, you see us on social me uh, media ministering out there daily. There's also a Planned Parenthood in Charleston, South Carolina, and there's a Planned Parenthood right here in Columbia. The latest numbers that I have seen come from 2020, and it says that 5,468 image bearers of God were slaughtered, listen to me, not, under, not only under the watch of the church, but many of those babies were sacrificed under our dime. If you are here, Chances are you already are on, you're already on board, at least ideologically, with the complete and immediate abolishment of baby murder to include criminal charges for anyone involved in taking the life of that little bitty baby. But I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, what will you be doing in the meantime while we wait for God to sort out the mess in the House and in the Senate Representative Hill will tell you, this is going to take time. 
Pastors, how are you going to lead your people into the fight to stop that image bearer from being murdered this coming Monday morning and Tuesday and Wednesday? Now, I'm going to pick on Baptist for a minute because I am one. But this is also for my Presbyterian brothers and sisters and anyone who claims to be Protestant. Did you know that there are over 2,000 Baptist churches within an hour and a half drive of one of those three child sacrifice centers? The South Carolina Baptist Convention claims that there are nearly one million people represented in their ranks. A million people. What we need to be finding out, brothers and sisters, is where these people are. Because I will tell you where they are not. They're not at the murder mills. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Getting behind legislation that calls for the abolition of abortion is essential. But it is not sufficient. We must be willing to lay our lives down for our neighbors. And I know that's going to look differently for each of us because God has sovereignly placed us in different circumstances. But I promise you this, there are ways that you can support the fight that takes place every day outside of the gates of hell. One way that you can get involved is to start including the Holocaust into your prayer life. I think a lot of times, myself included, we say we believe God moves when we pray, and yet, we don't believe it enough to actually do that. In Matthew 21, 13, Jesus said, It is written that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Sadly, it's one of the things we spend the least time doing with our church family. We need to be praying for the supernatural power of God to be shown out there like it was in the days of Moses. We need to pray for lives to be spared. Pray for the repentance of the doctors and the pro-aborts. And pray for those who carry the gospel out there every single day. Another way that you can help us is by, sign, uh, by signing up to become what we call a house of refuge. Our job at the murder mill is not to personally care for the families once they choose life. We don't have the numbers nor the resources to pull that off. But your church does. Our job is to get these moms and dads under the care of biblical pastors and elders so that they can be fed both physically but more importantly spiritually. So make sure you sign our petition and give us a good email to be able to get that info to you on how you can partner with us in that way. And lastly, you can get into the fight by bringing this matter to the attention of your pastors and your, and your elders so that we can meet with them and prayerfully equip them to make this a priority in the mission and the rhythm of their church. Y'all have heard me say it, those of you that know me, and I will continue to say it because it's, it's the truth. Abortion is not a humanitarian issue. So it's not this idea, well, you know, I don't like it. I really don't. I'm against it. But, you know, that's a political thing. And, and the church and politics, you know, it shouldn't really mingle uh, you know, after all, we, we, by the way, we give a lot of money to the pregnancy centers and we do all this kind of stuff. It's, you know, that's just not really any of our business. We don't get to say that, church, because it is our business. Right. And the reason why it's our business is because this is a great commission issue. Going off script, Lord help me. <laughs> Scripture screams from Genesis to Revelation that this is a kingdom of God issue. Child sacrifice isn't new. It's been going on for thousands of years. It's just been repackaged with a word called abortion. Prophets dealt with this. The apostles dealt with this. We need to deal with this. We have been commanded, church, not encouraged, Commanded 
by God Almighty to tell the world that abortion is murder. Not because it's a conservative or a Republican principle, because thus saith the Lord. The most powerful political statement ever made in human history was all power and all authority in heaven and on earth belong to me. Who said that? King Jesus. And our job is to go tell the world. And guess what, church? There were no exceptions given for the magistrate or the child sacrifice temples. God reigns there too. We have got to take ownership of the battles that God has called His church to fight. We don't have the freedom to outsource the battles that God has called us to. It wasn't told to Peter by Jesus that the gates of hell will be overcome by Republican conservative principles hoisted onto the culture. Jesus said His church would be the means by which the gates of hell are overcome here. In closing, a couple of weeks ago we were uh, attending an OSA conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Some of you here today, you were there and you can attest to this. One morning... About 50 Christians went to the abortion mill. And do you know what happened to Planned Parenthood that morning in Nashville, Tennessee? When they heard that there were 50 Christians coming with Bibles and worship, 50 Christians shut the whole place down. Not a single baby was touched that day. I mentioned earlier that the South Carolina Baptist Convention, you know, they relish in the fact that they've got a million people on board. This shocked me when I did the math. It's easy for us to say, well, Matt, you know, the church is busy. We're doing other things. So I get it. You know, maybe, maybe 50% could go out there. No, that's too many. Maybe 30, 20, 10. No, that's still too many. Do you know how many 1% of a million people is? Any math whizzes out there? 10,000 Christians. 1%. What a shame it is if the South Carolina Baptist Convention can't get 1% to show up at the gates of hell and interpose for babies. What would happen if 10,000 Christians showed up in Greenville? Seriously, think about it. What would happen? What, if, what happened if 10,000 Christians were out at Columbia right now in Charleston? You know what I think we might see? I think we may just see a mighty move of God happen in this state. I think maybe, just maybe, we may be able to achieve through the sovereign providence of God Almighty what we think right now can only come through means of legislation. My prayer and my hope is that this is the generation God use, uh, chooses to glorify Himself in the ending of child sacrifice. And may it start right here with the church of South Carolina and then spread to the nation and then to the world. And may Jesus Christ, our King, receive every drop of glory for it. If this resonates with you, I would urge you to reach out to our brothers and sisters at endabortionnow.com or operationsaveamerica.org. Thank you again for being here. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Durbin with End Abortion Now. I wanted to let you know that we have a bill of equal protection for all humans from conception in your state. A bill to abolish, criminalize, and end abortion once and for all. I'm going to invite you to join me at your state capitol for our rally for this bill to end abortion once and for all in your state. I will see you there.